Yep. Mr. President, <clears throat> only a very short time ago, we both took part in the ceremony on the occasion of your country's accession to the Council of Europe. In your speech, you spoke of your thoughts and your feelings on this important day for Georgia and for the Council of Europe. I do not believe that there is any inevitability about the progress of affairs. They are directed by the force and persistence and strengths of individual personalities. Georgia owes you a great debt. We welcome you because we respect and admire you. You were the Soviet foreign minister. That was when I first met you. Touched your hand in a crowd, to be more precise. But in your heart with Mikhail Gorbachev, you were a Democrat with a fierce and a deep and an abiding loyalty to your beloved native Georgia. You have survived assassination attempts. You are tackling huge social problems, as I heard you spell out in the Georgian parliament, in the clear, direct, honest way, which is your hallmark. You are a man of courage and vision. I salute you and I am honored to be able to call upon you to speak to us. The process of self-renovation, or rather self-renewal, the members of the Assembly, the Council of Europe is a secure and reliable home to every nation. It is particularly precious, however, for small states, since it provides a haven wherein they can assert themselves and are guaranteed to retain their national identity. Contrib contributing at the same time to the European and world civilizations. To my fellow countrymen and myself, the new image of Europe is shaped by the belief that Strasbourg is as close to Tbilisi as it is to any other European capital. With this belief in our hearts, we are resolved to cooperate with the Council of Europe and the Parliamentary Assembly to bring into fruition the plan for the European order for the 21st century. In this, as in any other sphere of politics, allow me to remain an incorrigible optimist. Thank you.